Let me stop. Resume here. Turn this up some. There we go. <clears throat> and show captions. Okay. Do you want to do 13 first or do you want to go back to number seven first? Um, 13 and um also 15 because I already did 13, 15, okay. 14. Okay, no worries. Let's see. Uh, let's go back to 13. What's going on with that? All right. Let me scroll around here. All right. Excuse me. One out of every three Americans believes that the U.S. government should take primary responsibility for eliminating poverty in the United States. If 10 Americans are selected, find the probability that at most three will believe the U.S. government should take primary responsibility for eliminating poverty. Okay. <laughs> so how do we start? We find the, the N equals 12. Uh, well, for 13, it says, I see 10. Do you see 12? Did she change? I mean, it? 10. 10. <laughs> okay. N is 10. Then what? The B. Or no. You need the you need the 10. You need mm -hmm. the N, right? What else do we need to find? The B. Okay, which is one out of three. That's the probability, right? One out of three. And we are talking about the same group. We're not going to fall for the trap that I did last night. One out of three Americans believe that we should take action. And that's the same group. So P is one out of three. That's good. And we need one more thing. We need to know um, how far up we should go, what our X contains, right? The probability mm -hmm. that at most three, three is the most. So three and below. So what this looks like, before I put it on the calculator, let me put it on the screen. What this looks like is we have for number 13, we have N is equal to 10. We have P is equal to one third. And I believe you can enter fractions for P. This is 0. 0.3 repeating, okay? Mm -hmm. And X is at most three. So we're entering zero, one, two, or three here, right? If we're starting from zero, then binome CDF does not require us to subtract. So this is going to be binome <coughs> CDF. N is 10. P is, I'll write the fraction here, one third, one third. And <clears throat> my X, I want to go all the way up to three at most. So let's do this. Let's let me get a new share. I need to open the calculator first. Um, so bear with me for a minute while it opens. There we go. Here's my whoops. There we go. Here's my calculator. And we have, let me clear this out. All right, so we have second distribution, mm -hmm. binomial CDF. We have 10. We have, this time it's one third. Let's see if it'll take it. And three, let's see. I'm not sure if. Oh yeah, it does take it. If it does or not. Oh yeah, it did. So I have 0.5592. Does that agree with her answer or no? Yep. Okay. It's cool. correct. All righty. So that's how we do that one.
And you said 15 also? 15. 15. Sure. Yeah. Let me go back to that. Um, let's see, 15. Of graduating high school <laughs> seniors, 14% that their generation said that their generation will be remembered for their social concerns. If seven graduating seniors are selected at random, find the probability that either two or three will agree with that statement. Two or three will agree with that statement. <clears throat> okay, so what are we doing here? Okay, the N is seven. Yeah, okay, right. Seven graduating se seniors, uh-huh. And the <clears throat> B is 0.14. P is 0.14, good, uh-huh. Mm. And my X is? X is either two or three. Right, so it's, bo it's both of those together, right? So is it where are we going to add or subtract? We okay. So that there's a couple of ways to do this. What we have been doing because we need that, but you're correct. If you, especially if you've been um, working on other ways, there are there are two ways of doing it. Okay, the way that I've been showing you to do it because I didn't want to teach you too many commands at the beginning was with the binomial CDF. And since we're using, since we're using two and three, right? We're mm -hmm. not starting from zero. So we would need, if we use the binomial CDF, like I did on the previous one, I'd have to subtract it. I'd have to get, go all the way up to three and then subtract the ones I don't want, okay? But there is another way to do it. You can do it with the PDF, P as in Paul, the single mm -hmm. one, and add those two together if you want. Okay. But if you accumulate it, you have to subtract it because the accumulated one only knows how to start from zero counting. Mm hmm. So what we've been doing is we've been doing this. We've been saying second distribution. Um, let's see, where is it? There it is. Second distribution binomial CDF, our friend right here. Okay, we have seven this time. Our probability of success is 14%. And our we start with three, because we want to include that. Don't hit enter just yet again, because we're going to subtract. Now, we're going to go second distribution, binomial CDF. This is 7.14. Now, I want the two, but I don't want the zero and the one. So I'm going to go up to one here paste it, subtract it off. 0. 0.2462 is where it would round. 2462 because it has a six behind the one there. Okay. You can also use the PDF if you choose. You can do second distribution binomial PDF. Now, the thing about the PDF function here, P as in Paul, is that it only counts, oh, oops, it only counts one probability at a time. So you never have to worry about like accumulating anything. This is 0.14. And I would accumulate two here and paste it. Now I need to add the PDF for three, second distribution, binomial PDF, 714 and 
three. It comes out the same. So we could do this either two ways? You can. You can. You can either do it cumulatively because the thing is you're counting the same way. You're just you're just approaching it differently. That's all. But you're still counting the same two probabilities, right? Uh -huh. The probability of two and the probability of three. It just depends on how you want to do it. The, the distribution is exactly the same. It's just how you're how you're organizing to count is different, but the numbers that you're counting are the same. That's why it comes out the same. But you see why I didn't want to show you this at first and confuse you, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. um, because you hadn't really looked at the section yet and probably hadn't gotten help. But congratulations to you for figuring out that or or kind of thinking that there must be another way because there is but those are the two ways that you can approach that okay as long mm -hmm. as you as long as you add those two probabilities together that's that's essentially what needs to happen you need to find the sum of those two okay mm -hmm. And then would you like seven. to go back to number seven? Sure. Yes. <laughs> Recap on number seven. Sure, we can do that. All the parts are just B and C, Jason. Yeah, because number seven was the most confusing one for the homework. I okay. I'll buy that. All right. So here, let's see if I can do a better job of breaking this down. So it says 53% of all persons in the United States population have at least some college education, okay? Choose 10 persons at random, okay? So a couple of things to note, just because I've been through this problem and so have you a few times, but let's note this. We have, we have our probability right here, 53%. This probability is the people who have at least some college education. That's going to become important later when we do some of these parts, okay? So this 53 goes with at least some college education. And it says we choose 10 persons at random. So part A here says exactly one half have some college education. So couple of things to note. Now, one half of what? One half of these 10 people. Okay, one half of these 10 people. And it's exactly one half. So here you're looking at probability of half of 10. Half of 10 is 10 divided by two, which is five. So this is the probability that five people will have some college education. So because I'm working with the same group here, this is 53%. So this is binomial, and this is one single number. So I'm gonna use PDF this time. I'm gonna use the point, right? Then I have 10 people from my sample, the whole group. I have a 53% chance of succeeding. And I have five people that I'm looking at, okay? So I don't think that was a big, a big deal, but that was the setup for that one. P of five binomial PDF of 10.53 and five. So if I go to, the calculator here, this is second distribution. Oops, let me select my 
hold on. It wants me to, there we go. Okay, so this is 10. Math, uh, I'm sorry, not yet, no, that was a mistake. This is second distribution, binomial PDF. We have 10, we have 0.53, and we have five. Exactly five people paste it, point two four one six, which <clears throat> it looks a little bit like the last answer, but it's different in the last two digits. So be careful there. Point two four one seven is where this would round if you were doing four places. Okay. Mm -hmm. That one's okay, right? All right, let's go to B. B says, because B is where it started to get interesting. It says at least five, okay? At least five do not have any college education, okay? Do not have any. This group is not this 53%, okay? Because these 53% have some education. At least five do not have any means that what we're doing here is we need to find the complement of this 53%. So what this is saying is that we have 53% have some, have some, college education. But if I want to know how many don't have that, because that's not everybody, right? Then over here, I can say that, remember, we can do 100% or one if we want, but 100% minus 53% or one minus 0.53, depending on how you want to approach it, this um, difference is 47%, okay? This difference is 47% who do not have any college education, okay? So, so for how, do I, how do I put that in the calculator? Okay, so you can do this a couple of, if you're looking at the percentages, it's 100 minus 53. If you want to put in the decimal, you can put in this. You can put in 1 minus, because if I, 100% as, as a decimal is just 1, right? 1 minus 0.53. And that okay, should be 0.47 or 47%, right? Mm -hmm. Now it says, it says, if I go back here, it says we want to find at least five, at least five. So here on B, when I'm doing at least five, for part B of this, okay? Let me go, this is number, this is number seven, B. So we're going to the seven B, right? And we have at least five do not have any college education. So here, remember my N was 10 people. My P was, now here my P is, all right, it's one minus point 
five three because I'm looking at the opposite group, which is point or I can four put forty seven. Yeah, you can put point forty seven in there. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking for at least five. So in this case, I'm looking for five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten. Now, by the same logic that we used on the previous problem that we did, you could, you could, I wouldn't recommend it, but you could do PDF on every single one of these six and add them together. You could do that, but that would be a lot to put in. Or you could just do binome now you're going to have to do two of them because you're not starting from zero so you do binome cdf if you do two of them right go all the way up to 10 first so go all the way up to the b um up to the end so we have n is 10 p is 0.47 and X, your starting X is 10 here, then subtract binome CDF 10.47. And I want to subtract the first four because I don't want five. I, I'm sorry, I do want five. I don't want the first four. So I'm going to subtract four here. Okay. So now that's what my command line looks like. Okay, there it is. Let's put it in the calculator and see what we get. So now we have second distribution. Go to binomial CDF right here, 10.47 and 10, paste it. Don't hit enter again yet, because I'm gonna subtract. So then second distribution, binomial CDF, 10.47, and remember, we want to start from five, so we want to get rid of up to four. We're going to paste it. Now hit enter, and you get 0.5474. That's where that answer came from. Hmm. I got it also. Okay. Mm hmm questions about that uh yeah so for the groups of five it's always six five to ten for the groups of five um yeah because if you're doing okay so it depends on how it's worded if it said that's a good question so if it said something like the probability Let's say it asks for the probability of less than five people, or actually, let's say fewer, fewer than five, fewer than five have a college education, right? Now, if it's fewer than five, it doesn't include five, does it? Mm -hmm. It doesn't include five. So this would just be zero, one, two, three, and four. Okay. If it said fewer than five, you'd only go to four. If it said at least. Probability, yeah, if it said at least five, you'd be doing five through 10, right? And that's why, let me come back here and show you this again. 
because I'm sure you've seen it, but I'm not sure if um, if it's actually dawned on you yet what it's for, but let me show you something here. I'm going to bring up the PowerPoints for this section. And they're also, they're in um, every section for the next few chapters, actually. Um, let me bring up the PowerPoint for um, 5.3. Homework, here it is. If you look at, let me see, zoom screen. If you look at the math common phrases chart, okay, she gives you a bunch of phrases here and all of these phrases translate to the symbol that's above them. So if you ever see greater than, higher than, bigger than, increase, all of that, that's greater than, okay? If you have less than, greater than, is not less than, Right. Um, this is different from change in all of that. Um, but notice here, is at most is less than or equal to. Is at least is greater than or equal to. So um, is no more than or is not more than is less than equal to is not less than, is greater than equal to. So these phrases are here because beginning in this chapter, these phrases come up, especially the phrases in the first two rows going across come up in chapter five, but you're gonna start to see more and more of these come up in the succeeding chapters, chapter six through uh, 12 that we're gonna cover more and more of these phrases. So if you're not sure what symbol they would translate as, she has the whole chart here for you, okay? So that might be helpful to you, okay? So yeah, that's, that's there. I just wanted to show you that. So here, let's go to part C. Part C says fewer, okay, fewer than five have some college education, okay, fewer than five. So here, we're going to go back to our whiteboard. And if I said fewer than five, right, there it is, have a college education. X is going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, right? Now, remember, if, you're, if your X starts from 0, so when computing binomial probability, if X starts from 0, which ours does here, then there is no need to subtract two cumulative probabilities. Okay, so in this case, this is just since I'm using the same. Um, now here, you have to remember, these people have a college education, okay? So we're back to they have a college education. So in this case, it's, let me put a note on the side over here. In this case, it's N is still 10, because we're still dealing with the same 10 people. Right. P, though, is 
the likelihood that they have a college education, which they gave you, that's 53%. And your X here, as I mentioned previously, is zero, one, two, three, or four. So far, so good? Yep. So this becomes, this becomes probability of x less than five is equal to binome, whoops, binome CDF 10, point fifty three and four. Good. So let's see. Let's go ahead and do the calculator here. We have second distribution. Ten fifty three. So I'm just going to change this to fifty three here and four, and we're going to. Did I? Okay, okay hold on. I somehow got, hi, Mauricio. Hello, Shana. We're working on 5-3 right now. We're doing number seven. Um, we have been doing some other ones. So I don't know if you have questions about that or you're working on something different, but we should be, we're no looking at 7-C right now. Okay, so thank second you. distribution binomial CDF, we have 10, we have, we're going to change this because these people do have education. So this is 53 and we're going to four and then we just poke it, poke it in and we get that 0. 0.3057 is where it would run. Okay, Jason. Mm hmm. Yeah, I got it. Is that is that better? <laughs> yep. Okay. Thanks for hanging with me. I hope that was clearer than the last time I explained it to you. <laughs> yeah. Anything yeah. else? No, I guess that's all. All righty. Well, you take care and um, good luck on your exam. It's coming up soon. Okay. All right. We'll Goodbye. see you. Okay. Sure thing. Take care. Mauricio, what can I help you with today? You know what, um, question. Yesterday you said something that the professor, um, she made a correction on one of the homework assignments. On, on 5-3, she, um, if you downloaded it before Tuesday, she, um, she had to go in and change the answer key because oh. the, there were quite a few errors in the answer key. So um, the problems are okay, but the answer key, um, she she changed it and uploaded a new version. Okay, so. So make sure you're actually looking at, if, you're, if your answers in 5.3 are not matching. Her, okay. Then yeah. go back and download just download the, the homework assignment and look at the key because she changed it. She somehow, she ended up with some of the wrong uh, problems in the key. I think she changed some of the problems that she assigned. Okay. And so, but she she didn't change the, the answers yeah. in the answer key. So yeah, we had quite a, we had quite a field day with that. Gotcha. You know what? I'm on, which one am I on? Five, two. Okay. Question number nine. 
five I, two but, number nine okay I got a different answer than she did. Than she okay. Well, let's take a look at it. it. I mean, that's possible. Let's see. I I think we've been through it, and I think we caught all those. But let me check. Five two, number nine. You said correct. Okay. Let's take a look at this here. It you know she's human like the rest of us, so it it could happen. Okay. <laughs> uh, um, let's see. Five, two, number nine. All right. So, oh, the, yeah, this one was the hardest one on here. So let's see what we got. For a daily lottery, a person selects a three-digit number. Okay. If a person plays for a dollar, she can win $500. Okay. Fi okay, so find the expectation. That's the first part. Did you get that part? I did. You did get that, okay. In the same daily lottery, if a person boxes a number, she will win $80. Find the expectation if the number 123 is played for $1 and boxed. Okay, okay. you know what? Um, I, I ended up on the first part getting... 45 cents mm. and so i didn't even go to sec the second party because if i got 45 cents then i'm sure the second part's going to be wrong oh okay so you didn't get okay so let's yeah, i'm okay, sorry let's... I like i did get the first part but i came out with the wrong answer so i'm like no you know no problem oh. we'll go back and do it it's not a problem continue. so we have for a daily lottery a person selects a three-digit number if you play for a dollar, you win 500. Now, the next thing I need to ask you, there's two ways to do this, okay? She'll mm -hmm. take either method. Before I show you how to do this, which method did you use? Did you uh, use X as the prize or X as the gain? X as the gain. Gain, okay. So in that case, in part A for this one, this is section 5.2, number seven, okay? Then here, um, we're gonna look at, we have a person plays a five digit number. So I mean, three digit number. So there's a three digit number. And if you, get your number chosen, you can win $500. You can win $500, okay? But you it costs you a dollar to play the game, okay? Correct. So, and you you play it once. So here, you it costs, oops, the cost is $1, okay? So now, and we're going to do the method that we're going to do is we're going to let X equal the overall gain. That, that's important because it slightly affects your setup. Okay. Okay. So that's why I have to make this distinction, especially if you go and watch this later or you see somebody else do it the other way. <laughs> Because it's slightly, if it doesn't affect the answer, but it affects how the problem looks. So this is X here. This is X. This is my probability of X. Now, the first thing that people run into, there's, there's a few things in this problem that people run into. And that is, how many three-digit numbers are we talking about? We're talking about 900. No. No? No. There are 989. There are that's the other mistake people make. There are one, there are 1,000 five digit numbers at uh, three digit numbers, and that's because zero, zero, zero counts. Triple zero okay. counts. So I got up to 999. Um, right. Like 100 to 999. So, so here's the thing. So it's just like, okay, so let me explain it. Like, cause that's, that's a mistake that people make. If I talk about the digits, people think one through nine, right? So they think nine mm -hmm. digits. 
the same reason. So remember my digits are zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, right? Okay. Those are my digits. Now, zero, zero, zero is valid. Zero, zero, zero is valid here. So that means let's, let's try it this way, okay? okay. I'm going to do this two different ways because this, this does, this is the first place that people get stuck, like I said. Um, let's use the counting rules from the previous chapter, okay? I'm going to choose a three-digit number. So how many ways are there to do that? Well, I can repeat the digits, right? So I'm going to multiply these operations together to see how many three-digit numbers I have, right? So mm -hmm. I have 10 choices for the first one. There they are, 0, 1 through 9, right? I have 10 numbers for the second one. Same thing, 0, 1 through 9. And I have 10 digits for the third one. That makes it a thousand possible numbers. Correct. And Zero I messed up. Okay. Three, so three, there's three. so the first place here is there are 1,000 possible three digit numbers. That's the first thing to be aware of. Now, only one of those for the first um, for the first part of this question, not the boxed portion, but the first part. There's a thousand possible three-digit numbers. Now, in the first part of this, only one of those, only one of those, wins. We don't know which one, but only one of them wins. Okay. So now what we have here in this situation, the chart is really a lot easier because there's only two things that can happen. Either you win. Yeah, you, the, um, win a dollar. I mean, yeah. Okay. Now if, now, if you win the game, right? Uh-huh. You win 500. Yeah, but be careful. You may, if you make X your overall gain, that's why I asked you this. Okay. If you do, you get $500, right? But so your overall gain is 49. If you make X your overall gain, then this is 499. Why? Because it's 500 minus the one that you spent. Mm hmm. Okay, that's where this comes from. So this is 499 here. Okay, if you do it this way, X is the overall gain. Now, how many chances do you have to win? Well, the probability is one over a thousand. thousand. Right. Now, how many chances do you have to lose? You have 999 over a thousand that you're going to lose right yeah if you lose you you don't gain anything right yeah because you you have a loss here so this is going to be zero well remember this isn't your prize okay it's your overall gain. So it's the prize that you win, which is zero dollars minus the dollar that you spent, isn't it? Yes. So be careful there when you do that. Okay. Okay. Because now if, let me show you something. This is why I wanted to show you this. Now, if I choose to do, and we'll, we'll do this right now, but I'm going to show you something when we go back. Now, let's Let's calculate this. So you have 499 is your over a thousand, right? And then you have minus, minus uh -huh. one, right? Times 999. 
Wait, hold on, Sean. Is it a hundred or a thousand? It's a that I said a thousand and wrote a hundred. Thank you for catching that. Four ninety nine over a thousand minus one times nine ninety nine over a thousand. Right. Mm -hmm. Now go ahead and calculate that, and you should get. Negative 0 0.50, negative 50 cents. Tell I me did. if you do. Yes. Okay, that's where it's coming from. Now, the reason that I asked you, let me show you this so that you can see this. So this is, if you're using X as overall gain, then your chart looks like this, okay? If you, if you use X as overall gain, then whatever you cost, whatever it cost you is what you lost. Does that make sense? Yes. Because this overall gain is going to be um, your cost or your prize, if you won any prize, it's your prize minus your cost. Gotcha. Right? Yes. Now, if I do this and then again, X is equal to, if I use, and you can do this either way, X is equal to the prize, the amount of your prize, okay? Then when you do the chart, it looks like this. You do the chart and it says, here's my X. So this stays the same. This portion, the labels are the same, right? Uh -huh. But you need to label your X so that she knows. <laughs> okay, that's that's one of the things that she requires. You need to label your X here so she knows which one you use. Otherwise, um, it's going to count against you. So here, if X is your prize, now what happens is you still have win and loss because you still can win or lose, obviously, right? Uh -huh. But what happens is this, okay? What happens is if we win, let's say we win up here, we win, right? Uh -huh. Of it now, X is the prize. Now this is 500, okay? Because okay. your prize is $500 dollars. You have a one in thousand chance of winning it still. Your probability hasn't changed, right? Mm -hmm. Now, this one, if you, A if zero, you, yeah, right? this is zero now. Because if you lose, you don't, you don't win, your prize is nothing, right? Mm -hmm. You don't have to subtract the one because X is now your prize here. Okay. Does that make sense to you? It does. Yeah, because honestly, you know, sometimes I got a couple of questions wrong on some of the quizzes because the reading part. I don't uh, yeah, and, it, and mm -hmm. it's like, oh my God, I'm so dumb. I'm like, why didn't and then I, like right now the three digits? I was thinking mm -hmm. it starts with a hundred or three digits, but yeah, it's correct. Like how you say it's like zero to um nine, it's ten digits times ten. Gotcha. Um, now, one okay. thing I will, one thing I will caution you, and you'll hear me say this a lot in subsequent chapters, in statistics, pretty much everything means something, okay? Gotcha. There's, there are some distractors in statistics, but there's not nearly as many distracting elements. There are some. Mm -hmm. You know what, Sean, but, I was gonna, um, I'm sorry, but I was also going to tell you, I'll probably log in a little bit later. Um, I have okay. to look at my work that we did for the discussion, the probability discussion. Okay. I got a couple of questions wrong, okay. and I just want to see where I went wrong. I just couldn't find it right now. I'm like, I know I have it somewhere where I, okay. I how I worked it, but You're let right. me continue doing this. You're going to be here until what, 1230? I'll be here until, I'll be here until a little after 12. Yeah, most likely. Okay. If, well, let if, me, you, uh, if you need something else, just message me. Okay. Um, and I can probably talk to you. Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thank you so much, Shana. Like always. Thank you so You're much. You're welcome. All right. Bye. Bye. Where are we at? What time is it? Oh, it's only 11 30. Good.
Let me turn this off. Stop sharing. Let me turn off this.